Good evening, my name is Marcel, AI6MS, and today we're going to go through a simple demonstration of what it looks like to be a volunteer examiner for a exam tools tier two fully remote exam session. So normally you'd start off and you'd be part of a Zoom session with two other volunteer examiners in your exam room. So in this evening, I've got Sarah and Jeremy joining me as volunteer examiners in this Zoom room. So the first thing we're going to do is go to uh, beta.examtools.org for the demonstration I'll be using the development site and you would sign in here to assist with an exam as a volunteer examiner. So this would be the same login that you use at hamstudy.org um, and that should have already been set up with your uh, volunteer examiner team lead uh, should have already given you the information to get set up properly for this otherwise reach out to them and they'll get you set up. Once you're in here you should see the session that you've been assigned to on this screen. If you don't see any sessions assigned, again, reach out to your VE team lead and have them add you to that session. So today we're going to click into here and we can see that there are two applicants. This is on the applicant tab that have already connected uh, or are assigned to this session. Uh, one of them has already completed their exam and is done. And the other here, Valentina, is uh, waiting to take their exam. So we're going to walk through uh, having Valentina join us on the meeting uh, in this Zoom call, go through the actual exam, um, and, and walk through what the volunteer examiners would do. So first we're going to have uh, the candidate would join our room, so that would be assigned to us or they would join the actual meeting. And now it looks like this candidate has joined us in this session. So you can see now, uh, this is typically what it would look like. You would have a candidate, in this case, uh, candidate Valentina Tereshkova that is in their uh, bathroom at home. And that's actually a very good setup because it's a nice uh, empty environment with no uh, session materials laying around or other things that might get in the way. So that's actually uh, very helpful. So at this point, I think it's uh, worth showing you what that sort of screen would look like. In Zoom, you can resize this window and uh, you can spotlight, you can change up here between speaker view and gallery view. And this will allow you to select the candidate that you actually want to view. You can go up here and pin video or spotlight video. Um, that will show you that candidate's screen or that candidate's video largely so that you're not seeing the other volunteer examiner's screens during that time. So this would be the time when you'd have the candidate um, show you the room. They would turn their camera around and show you the different parts of the room, make sure that um, everything's set up correctly. You would check the candidate's ID. They would hold that up to the screen, make sure that you can read it, that their photo ID matches their face, um, and that the name on there matches uh, the name that you see here in the, in the session, right? So if that's all good, um, typically you'll have the candidate then share their screen. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Um, you have to, in the new version of Zoom, you do have to enable screen sharing. So if the host of your meeting has not done that, you have to make sure that you enable screen sharing for those um, participants. Um, and then the candidate will be able to share their screen. So they'll go ahead and share their entire screen. And we'll show you what that looks like. So this is what it looks like when the candidate's sharing their entire desktop, right? And if the candidate's sharing their entire desktop, what you can see is since we pinned this video, it's now on the side. If we unpin this video, you'll see that it switches back and forth. So it's kind of important to see, um, depends on what you want to look at here. So generally recommend pinning the candidate's video. And then you can use this slider to make the candidate's video and um, display bigger or smaller. So what we'll actually do here is I'll kind of tile the windows a little bit. And I find this can work pretty well for your exam um, and have it kind of large candidate desktop and large candidate video so you can see their screen and see what they're doing and also see their face. And then you can have your exam tools um, window up here on the side. Uh, in this case, we also have our uh, Zoom uh, participants list here. And you might also have a chat window to talk to your volunteer examiners or something else. OK, so once we have the candidate here, um, there are a couple things we need to do on both sides. The first one is on the candidate side. We'll need to ask them to open up their uh, Chrome browser. And they'll be going to the website uh, beta.examtools.org. Um, and that's the website that we're using for uh, the beta software, the tier two software as it's called. Um, and they'll go ahead, go here to take an exam. 
and this is where they would enter the session call sign. Um, and if you ever need to know what that is, you can see that here that tells you what the session call sign is on your VE screen. Um, and then the candidate's pin is right here next to their name. So if they don't know it, you can help them with that. So this one's AI6MS, and then the candidate pin is 5974. You also see that here on the Zoom meeting um, for this session, the candidate's name was actually renumbered, renamed to their pin, and that can be very helpful during uh, these sessions as well. So go ahead and click uh, Join Session on the applicant side. And what you'll see now is that the applicant screen here shows that it's requesting to join the session. Um, and uh, we as the volunteer examiners would need to authorize them to join the session. So you'll see that this red icon showed up right away next to the applicant's name here on the list. Um, and they're requesting to join the session. So when I click on this, it will check, um, it'll confirm that we've done the ID check. So if we hadn't done that yet, we could do that again now and do that ID check. Um, and we could ask the, uh, just make sure that that's the right person that we're talking to. And if that looks good, we'll go ahead and approve them to join the session. So you'll see here, um, my screen changed to this, and then the screen share that the candidate's sharing with me now shows them as ready to start um, taking the exam. Oh, the, they can then start requesting the exam. Um, a few other things that you'll want to check before you actually start the exam is make sure that the candidate's computer is good, that they have no other programs open. Um, you want to check this taskbar that they don't have like Skype or Discord or other programs that might um, pop up and, and distract the candidate. Um, the other thing is if they do want to use a calculator, you can help them uh, set up that calculator on their screen. So often what will work well is they can bring up the built-in calculator and just set it there on the side and then set the um, actual exam off to uh, one side of the screen. So by tiling their screen like this, that can actually work very well. And then you as the VE can see what they're typing and they don't need to use anything on their desk. Otherwise they might be looking around like this and that might uh, distract during the exam. So if this looks good, and you think that the candidate's uh, ready to go, the last thing we want to do before we start um, them on the exam is we want to go ahead and assign all the volunteer examiners. And this can be done before or after the candidate takes their exam, but it's generally good practice to go ahead and do that um, before you start the exam, just to make sure your VEs are all um, ready to go and set up. So for the VEs here, for you, you as a VE, you simply go to the candidate that's here, and then you'll click um, assign assign VE. For your screen, it'll just show as assign yourself to this candidate. Um, and I can show you what that looks like here. Um, so if we, we bring up uh, Sarah as one of our VEs that's helping with this, uh, on her screen here, if she clicks this, um, it would show, oh, sorry, and she's actually set at a higher permission level. So if we set Sarah here to a lower level, so just as a volunteer examiner, you'll see she just has this button that says assign to me. Right, so on this candidate screen, she would find the one that she wants to help with, click here and click assign to me. And then this candidate's now assigned uh, to Sarah as well. And then we'll have Jeremy do the same thing on his screen so that Jeremy is assigned to it. And you'll see here on your screen now, you have all three volunteer examiners there. So the little icon has the little number three on it. And when you mouse over it, you can see it's Marcel, Sarah and Jeremy. And those are the three VEs that are monitoring this exam. So that's perfect. So at this point, you can go ahead and uh, have the candidate start the exam. So you'll just ask the candidate, go ahead and click the Start Technician Exam button, at which point, again, this is an action that requires authorization from one of the VEs. So you'll see that there's, again, this red icon here that shows up, and it says click to respond to request to start the exam. So we'll click on that, and then if everything's ready and the room's all set and we all go on mute on the call, um, and I'll actually do that right now too, so I would mute myself here as the volunteer examiner. Um, and then we'd go ahead and click uh, approve and start the exam. So at this point, the candidate will start taking the exam. And if you look and see what the candidate's screen face looks like as they're reading questions, you can see them actually read the question and go through and see what's working correctly. Um, if they look off screen like that, um, or if their eyes wander around, you'll see how easy it is. All of those are eye movements that are unnatural. If I'm just looking at my screen, and as a candidate, you'll see that this is how my eyes would be looking. I'd be reading a question like this, reading an answer, reading the next answer, deciding which one is the correct one, reading the question, reading the answer, deciding which one it was, et cetera, right? For this exam, we'll just go ahead and skip through and uh, get the answers selected here correctly. And during this time, you'll notice again on your main screen, this is helpful where 
you can adjust if you want to look at their eyes more closely or if you want to look at one or the other you can adjust your zoom screen to what makes sense for you right if you want to see what they're looking at a little more closely or if you want to see their video more closely you can simply slide that slider bar back and forth i like splitting it right down the middle um, if you have a big enough monitor then you can see both of those very clearly um, that can work very well while the candidate's taking the exam okay so this candidate's just about finished so at this point, the candidates finish taking the exam. Um, they can either uh, click grade exam at the top or bottom here. Um, but when they do that, that again requires a VE to do something. So if we go back to our um, exam tools website as a VE, you'll see again, there's a red icon that showed up that asks you to do something. Um, and we'll click on this one. And again, this one now requires a password because you're actually grading the exam. So at this point, you're verifying as a volunteer examiner that the exam integrity was good, there were no anomalies that you're concerned about, um, and you're ready to grade the exam and, and, set and see if the candidate passes. So as soon as you click that, you see it instantly scores. And on the candidate screen here, um, they see their passing score as well. Depending on your VE team's policies, you may allow them to take um, the general exam then. Uh, or you can have the candidate uh, go ahead and finish and sign and sign the forms. So we'll go ahead and sign the forms and walk through that. Um, it'll, it will prompt the candidate once they go to this step, they can't go back and take the exam again or take another exam. So this is pretty important. And here the candidate can review uh, their forms. They can double check their information and their address and make sure that's all good. And then if everything looks good, they'll go ahead and sign here just on this little touchpad. Um, they can just fill it right in using their touchpad or mouse on the computer and then click sign documents and finish session. And at this point, um, the candidate is effectively done for the session. So typically you'd send them back to, um, they can either leave the meeting or they can go back to the main room depending on how you have your uh, exam session set up. So I'll go ahead and have the candidates sh stop sharing their screen. Um, and then we'll go ahead and have the candidate leave the session. Um, since they're no longer needed on that meeting. So they'll go ahead and leave meeting. And uh, at that point, the candidate is gone. So the only things you need to finish up from the volunteer examiner side is to go ahead and do all the signatures. So we'll just sh show you what that looks like. Again, now that the candidate signed, there's a red icon here saying that we need the signatures for this candidate. So uh, all the VEs can do this at the same time on their computers. And that would look like this. So you could simply go in here, click the sign button next to your name. Um, this is again for a fully remote exam. And then you would, uh, you can preview the applicant forms and make sure that these look good. So this will load the uh, CSCE for the candidate um, and the uh, 605 form, right? So you wanna make sure that this is filled out correctly, that the candidate's signature looks correct, that the right technician element was checked um, and that the uh, score that was logged was correct as well. You can see there are full results here as well um, at the end. And if that all looks good, um, then you can go ahead and sign here. Again, this one requires you to enter your password because you're verifying that all this paperwork and documentation is correct. And this is actually an electronic signature um, that is perfectly, that is legally valid for you to um, sign these forms. So go ahead and hit uh, sign on this one. Um, and you'll see that it went up to a number one here. And if I click on it, you can see that I've signed, but the other two VEs have not yet. So I'll go ahead and sign for those VEs real quick on their screens um, and show what that looks like. So we just signed for um, Sarah and you can see that updated in real time on that screen. And then if we sign for uh, Jeremy as well, then you'll see it go up to three signatures. So at this point it's up to three signatures and this is all, um, this candidate is all pretty much all set at this point. The last step that is usually uh, the volunteer examiner team lead or a, or a uh, designated uh, volunteer examiner that's helping out with the exam will actually go through and do this mark complete. That actually goes through. It's one final check what your team lead normally does to mark the candidates complete and, com and, and finish out. If there are any issues, um, they can always come back to the VEs and then address those. Um, but at this point, uh, you're pretty much done with that candidate and then you could signal to your team lead that you're ready for the next candidate to come and join you in the room. Uh, when you're done with the, if all the exams for the day, if that was our last candidate, you're done. So you can uh, just exit out of exam tools. You can click log out and call it, call it a day. And that means you've finished this exam and you're good to go on and sign up for the next one that you wanna help with. 
So thanks very much for watching. I hope this video is helpful for you. If you do have any questions, please ask in the comments below or reach out to your volunteer examiner team lead um, and they can reach out on the exam tools discord with any questions they may have um, or if there are any issues or bugs that they need to report to the team. Um, but thanks for being a volunteer examiner. Thanks for helping make amateur radio great again. Bye.